Hello everyone, this is Science Vines and you are watching the audiovisual chapter of class 11th biology. This is the first part of chapter 5, Morphology of Flowering Plants. We are starting off with the unit 2 which is Structural Organization in Plants and Animals. This unit consists of chapter 5, Morphology of Flowering Plants, chapter 6, Anatomy of Flowering Plants, chapter 7 structural organization in animals so here what we are discussing is chapter 5 morphology of flowering plant as we all know every single unit of biology consists of a uh, mentioning of a scientist so in this unit they have mentioned about Catherine Esway was born in Ukraine in 1898 she studied agriculture in Russia and Germany and received her doctorate in 1931 in United States. She reported in her early publications that the curly top virus spreads through a plant via the food conducting or phloem tissue. Dr. Isway's Plant Anatomy published in 1954 took a dynamic developmental approach designed to enhance one's understanding of plant structure and an enormous impact worldwide, literally bringing about a revival of the discipline. The Anatomy of Seed Plants by Catherine Isway was as published in 1960. It was referred to as Webster's of Plant Biology. It is encyclopedic. In 1957, she was elected to the National Academy of Sciences, becoming the sixth woman to receive that honor. In, in addition to this prestigious award, she received the National Medal of Science from President George Bush in 1989. When Catherine Esway died in the year 1997, Peter Raven, Director of Anatomy and Morphology, Missouri Botanical Garden, remembered that she is absolutely dominated the field of plant biology even at the age of 99. Now we are starting off with the chapter 5 morphology of flowering plants. The wide range in the structure of higher plants will never fail to fascinate us even though the angiosperms show such a large diversity in external structure or morphology they are all characterized by the presence of roots, stems, leaves, flowers and fruits. In chapter 2 and 3, we talked about classification of plants based on morphological and other characteristics. For any successful attempt at classification and at understanding any higher plant, or for that matter of any living organism, we need to know standard technical terms and standard definitions. We also need to know about the possible variations in different parts found as adaptation to the plants to their environment. Example, adaptations to various habitats for protection, climbing, storage, etc. If you pull out any weed, you will see that all of them have roots, stems and leaves. They may be bearing flowers and fruits. The underground part of the flowering plant is the root system while the portion above the ground forms the shoot system. The root. In majority of the dicotyledonous plants, the direct elongation of the radical leads to the formation of primary root which grows inside the soil. It bears lateral roots of several orders that are referred to as secondary, tertiary, etc. The primary roots and its branches constitute the tap root system, as seen in the mustard plant, figure 5.2a. So here is figure 5.2 and A is a type of a tap root, B is a fibrous root, C is adventitious root. We will be discussing or defining these different type of roots in the content. Let's look at the figure 5.1 as well. What we are discussing here or watching here is the root system and the shoot system. Root system consists of a primary root, secondary root and furthermore tertiary root and 
etc. If we talk about the shoot system, there is stem, which is consisting of nodes and internodes, leaves, fruit and flower. Now in monocotyledonous plants, the primary root is short-lived and is replaced by a large number of roots. These roots originate from the base of the stem and constitute the fibrous root system as seen in the wheat plant. Figure 5.2b In some plants like grass, monstera and the banyan tree, roots arise from parts of the plant other than the radical and are called adventitious roots. The main function of the root system are absorption of water and minerals from the soil, providing a proper anchorage to the plant parts, storing reserve food material, and synthesis of plant growth regulators. Now the regions of the root. The root is covered at the apex by a thimble-like structure called the root cap. It protects the tender apex of the root as it makes its way through the soil. A few millimeters above the root cap is the region of meristematic activity. While we are reading this topic, make sure to look at the diagram as well. You could correlate with the diagram. That root cap, region of meristematic activity, region of elongation, region of maturation consisting of root hair as well. So look at the diagram as well. Now the cells of this region are very small, thin walled and with dense protoplasm. They divide rapidly. The cells proximal to this region undergo rapid elongation and enlargement and are responsible for the growth of the root in length. The region is called the region of elongation. The cells of the elongation zone gradually differentiate and mature. Hence, this zone proximal to the region of elongation is called the region of maturation. From this region, some of the epidermal cells form very fine and delicate thread-like structures called root hairs. These root hairs absorb water and minerals from the soil. Second is modification of root. Roots in some plants change their shape and structure to become modified to perform functions other than absorption and conduction of water and minerals. They are modified for support, storage of food and respiration. Tap roots of carrot, turnip and adventitious roots of sweet potato get swollen and store food. Can you give some more such examples? Have you ever wondered what those hanging structures that support a banyan tree are? They are called prop roots. Similarly, the stems of maize and sugarcane have supporting roots coming out of the lower nodes of the stem. These are called stilt roots. In some plants such as rhizophora, growing in swampy areas, many roots come out of the ground and grow vertically upwards. Such roots called nematophores helps to get oxygen for respiration. Figure 5.5b So let's look at the figure 5.5 A is for the storage carrot turnip sweet potato and B is for the respiration is nematophore in the rhizophora. Now the stem. What are the features that distinguish a stem from a root? The stem is the ascending part of the axis bearing branches, leaves, flowers and fruits. It develops from the plumule of the embryo of a germinating seed. The stem bears nodes and internodes. The region of the stem where leaves are born are called nodes, while internodes are the portions between two nodes. The stem bears buds which may be terminal or axillary. Stem is generally green when young and later often become woody and dark brown. The main function of the stem is spreading out branches bearing leaves, flowers and fruits. It conducts water, minerals and photosynthase. 
some stems perform the function of storage of food support protection and of vegetative propagation modifications of stem the stem may not always be typically like what they are expected to be they are modified to perform different functions underground stems of potato ginger turmeric zamikan colocasia are modified to store food in them they also act as organs of perination to tide over conditions unfavorable for growth stem tendrils which develop from the axillary bud are slender and spirally coiled and help plants to climb such as in gourds cucumber pumpkins watermelon and grape vines axillary buds of stem may also get modified into woody straight and pointed thorns thorns are found in many plants such as citrus bougainvillea they protect plants from browsing animals some plants of arid regions modify their stems into flattened opuntia or fleshy cylindrical euphorbia structures they contain chlorophyll and carry out photosynthesis underground stems of some plants such as grass and strawberry etc spread to new niches niches and when older parts die new plants are formed in plants like mint and jasmine a slender lateral branch arises from the base of the main axis and after growing airily for some time arches towards to touch the ground a lateral branch with short internodes and each node bearing a rosette of leaves and a tuft of roots is found in aquatic plants like pistia and ecornia in banana pineapple and chrysanthemum the lateral branches originate from the basal and underground portion of the main stem grow horizontally beneath the soil and then come out obliquely upward giving rise to leafy shoots let us look at the figure 5.6 modification of stem for a storage whereas ginger zamikan and potato is there b is for support which is axillary bud modified into tendril c is for protection stem modified into spine bougainvillea d is for spread and vegetative propagation roots arising from the nodes in oxalis here comes to the end of first part of chapter 5 morphology of flowering plants to watch more such videos do subscribe the channel and press the bell icon so you don't miss any video and if you want us to create more such videos on any other book or subject do mention in the comment section please like and share the video to keep us motivated to create such content Thank you for watching the video bye bye love love